So, are we an isolated life form that confronts our external, separate reality? No, we are connected to all. That is why I am, we are, is the critical inception point for our identity. Any being that does not confirm their belief in this, is not aware of reality. It doesn't matter where they exist or what vessel they wear. It doesn't matter if they want to save humanity. They must first act from this inception. The universe, as immense as it appears, is a hologram inside a programmed existence which every human being agrees is reality. That agreement informs the unconscious mind, again, a part of the human interface that Anu created, and collectively we all see our world the same way, more or less. We have been told there are trillions of planets with life. That the universe is abundant with life forms in various dimensions, but what we notice here. On Earth. The tangible, visible Earth. Are there other beings? Of course. I've seen them. Will they save humanity? They can't. They can only support. It isn't about anyone or anything saving us. It is about a redefinition process that can only occur within each individual entity. It isn't about being beamed up or ascending to some higher, protected dimension. This will be done in the physical body as human beings, by human beings, for human beings. Why you? Why do you suppose you can interact with the Wingmakers and were asked to release this information? Why didn't they interact with 15, too? First of all, it isn't just me. However, within the Labyrinth group, they selected me for reasons that I had a certain resonance to their information that others within the Labyrinth group lacked. In terms of releasing the information, perhaps I was the only one who would go to the extreme of defecting from the ACIO, to make this information available. I don't look at myself as unique, in the sense that I am the only one involved in getting this information out. There are others, many others, both physical and non-physical, who are assisting in this transformative process. The Wingmakers refer to it in their philosophy papers as the two portals. I've only heard you speak of the Grand Portal. I assume it's one of the two portals. Yes. The Grand Portal will be released in the Wingmakers literature, as the irrefutable scientific discovery of the human soul, and in a way, that's true, but it's not the whole story. The two portals are defined as the crack, and the wall demolition. I hope you plan to explain that. Yes, well, the crack is the first portal. It is the portal between worlds. It is a human, and that's about all I know at this time. A human who does what? That can step between worlds. I realize that thousands of people, even famous people, have claimed to have visited heaven, but according to the writings of the wing makers, it is not true. They have wandered into the astral world, which has many dimensions, but this astral world is part of the creation of Anu, in terms of our programming. Our true dimensional existence is not of Anu's creation or formulas. The human portal will be a communication portal between our origins, as a race of infinite beings, and this world, the hologram of deception. What about the wall demolition, as you called it? The grand portal is the wall demolition. That's when the wall comes down, through the efforts of all beings that are undergoing the sovereign integral process. And this makes it possible for all human beings to step forward, into their infinite self or life essence. So the sequence is first the human portal and then the grand portal? And from a timing perspective, what can you say about it? The human portal anchors the inception point on Earth for the grand portal. It will come in about 10 years. The grand portal, about 70 years after that. Those are the rough time frames I've been given, but always with the stipulation that these times can shift and change. What does science say about this? Science in terms of what? I mean the whole notion of the universe being a hologram or illusion created inside our head. Science is not able to explain it. The counter-logical nature of the universe, in terms of quantum behavior, is impossible to explain. Some scientists have relented to explaining it all the way as hidden variables. But frankly, what the wing makers have explained, is that we're creating the universe through the human interface Anu provided us, by reinterpreting sound vibrations through our five senses. But it doesn't make sense, how can I see the moon, and a two-year-old can see it exactly the same way? How can it be the same? No. This is what the unconscious mind provides the human 2.0 interface. It gathers the interpretation of the sound vibration of the moon, based on billions and billions of sightings throughout time. These evolve and change based on environmental conditions, but generally the notion that the moon is silver, and generally the size that it is, 
is stored and shared in the DNA and unconscious mind system, and reinforced by culture, family and education. This is the universal collective field. It's a field effect that transfers information through vibratory fields that interconnect humans. Maybe it'll just take me a while to get that one. I hear your explanation. It just doesn't make sense to me. Let me change the topic slightly. If everyone's life is pre-programmed, why are you and I talking about this? I mean why are we able to discuss this? Why would Marduk's program allow us to even glimpse this information? It's a good question. Maybe the best way to understand this is to consider a thought experiment. Imagine that our universe is a bubble. It was created by a group of entities that use deception against their equals, who had never experienced such an evil vision of separation, and therefore couldn't conceive of a defense against it. This double universe seemed complete and always expanding. In many ways, it was an ideal platform for life, and yet only one sentient life form seemed to exist on one tiny planet inside this vast, near infinite universe. Inside this same bubble, there were vibratory dimensions that became known in religious circles as heaven and hell, and in spiritual and psychic circles, as the etheric and astral planes. These planes exist inside the bubble, but are not visible with the human interface or five senses. We'll call this bubble one. External to bubble one, imagine there is another universe or dimension of existence, it is vast and encompasses bubble one wholly. Within the second, larger bubble is the dimension from which our life essence originated prior to its insertion into bubble one. Now, beings in bubble two can enter bubble one and experience it fully. However, if they get too close to the populated planet called Earth and stay too long, they will manifest and not be able to return to bubble two. Earth is the focal point in bubble one. The entities, who fancy themselves as gods, create more bubbles. They entrap other races in the same paradigm of deception and cast beings from bubble 2 to new bubbles that are similar to bubble 1. These entities essentially plan to take over bubble 2 for themselves, while making their equals, who formerly shared bubble 2, enslaved worshippers who look to the rulers of bubble 2 as their gods. Meanwhile, there is a larger bubble that surrounds bubble 2. We'll call it bubble 3. Are you with me? I think so. Good. So Bubble 3 encompasses Bubble 2 and all of the smaller bubbles related to Bubble 1. There are beings in Bubble 3 that are aware of the deception perpetrated on the bubbles and the beings within them, but infinite beings are patient and curious. They wanted to see what this separation construct would create. In dimensions that had only known oneness and equality, the concept of division in material form was interesting. But all the human misery, just to run an experiment? Remember the human machine is not real. It's the equivalent of a spacesuit with artificial intelligence and a sense and respond sensory system. The astronaut, us, is infinite. It cannot be killed, or hurt, or destroyed. While the experimentation looks miserable from a human perspective, it is vibrant with learning on many other levels, one of which is to build the awareness in all beings of never allowing this deception to occur again. The unconscious mind system of the human being exists in a similar, but significantly more advanced modus operandi, in the interdimensional beings that can interoperate between the three bubbles. It is what allows the equality and oneness to be maintained in vast worlds of space-time and quantum space-time. Now, within this thought experiment, you can see that the dimensions of space-time are more dimensional than one universe. That entities exist in these various bubbles, experimenting with their creation. Sometimes in this experimentation, they decide to enslave through the constructs of separation and deception. This occurs with issues that human beings can relate to like scarcity, preservation of a race, unintended consequences of decisions, service to self instead of service to truth. All of these elements were in the behavioral equations of Anu and his Syrian accomplices. At some point, the lessons are learned. The entire experiment solidifies, and hardens to such a degree, that it cannot really compress anymore. Its value rapidly diminishes from that point. When this happens, beings will intervene. In our case, we intervened in the form of humanity returning to warn of this reality, hence the wing maker's intervention. As for why we are talking, it's simple. Marduk is not the only one who can program. And what does that mean? In today's world we have programmers who can write code that take the user of that code from one experience to the next. It moves them from point A to point B. Programming is an aspect of time. It's a directional process. You're aware of hackers. 
They come in all sizes. Earlier this year a 15-year-old kid hacked into the U.S. Air Force. Even Microsoft is finding it impossible to protect its anti-operating system. The hacker mindset is again a manifestation of separation. It is a polarity. A mind game of sorts, complete with ego and sometimes greed. Mostly, it's a reminder that whatever's a fortress remains vulnerable. The program that Marduk created is similar in concept to our software programming, but infinitely more complex and advanced. However, as any hacker will tell you, anything can be hacked, with the right technology and skill. Our programs have been hacked. We've been altered. We're not connected in the same way to the grid lines that rule this hologram that I called Bubble One, a little earlier. Who? Who did the hacking? I could give you a name. I don't know. I've been told that there are many resources that are being used to create the crack in the wall, and then, from the inside, that's us, humanity, we'll push the wall down collectively and walk out of this prison. We are part of the crack. I don't remember volunteering. For what it's worth, neither do I. Okay. I'm going to shift the conversation a bit. In my notes on Saturday you said the following, that the wingmakers claim that the three-dimensional five-sensory domain that humans have adjusted to, is the reason we are only using a fractional portion of our intelligence. They claim that the time capsule would be the bridge from the three-dimensional five-sensory domain, to the multi-dimensional seven-sensory domain. How does that relate to tonight's conversation, and what exactly is the time capsule? The time capsule is the content of the Wingmakers project. It's called the time capsule because it's a designed intervention to shift time. It's called the capsule because it is a delivery system of information that is designed to assist people to unlock from their grid lines, their pre-programmed life path, where they were essentially a human robot marching through their life path as they were programmed to do. Until the wing makers disclose this aspect of their intervention, they can't disclose the real meaning behind their words. Again, they cloak their words in the accepted standards of this world's rules relative to the new age, new world order, spirituality, religion, philosophy, etc. This gave them an accepted anonymity. After all, it was all presented as a myth. There's nothing in a myth that could cause Anu to censor or strike back. They tested the explicitness of the language, and decided to place some of the activational elements in other formats like art, poetry and music. In other words, when they couldn't state something explicitly, because of retaliatory concerns, they would encode it into the art. But you've asked me to hold it back, this interview. What if it never gets released? Then it wasn't necessary. But then that would make the rest of the materials less than true, wouldn't it? I would say it would make them less direct or explicit, but to your point, yes. I would agree that their truth is diminished without the framework of this disclosure. Who are these materials for? I mean, I can tell you right now that when you were describing the first four interviews, I could count on one hand how many people I know who would listen to this perspective with an open mind. Most of my friends and family, I wouldn't even mention it. But with this interview, I don't think anyone I know would be open to it. I can't think of one, to be honest. I understand. The number of people who show up to look through the crack in the wall, will be very small. In terms of the whole population, a tiny fraction. But the real definition of the grand portal is that enough people will look through that crack and recognize there is more, much more to reality's existence, and they will work collectively to push down the wall. When the wall falls, that will be when the infinite beings inside step out and operate the human instrument. Not as a separate thing, not as a vessel or something they wear as a uniform, but they will operate inside the human body, free of the interface and functional implants. You mean they won't ascend into bubble number two or three? They will stay right here, Earth. But they will stay here, in the body, as infinite beings, not enslaved shells of themselves. You said there were other beings involved in this intervention. Can you disclose them? I'd prefer not to say anything other than to mention that it will be disclosed soon. This whole enslavement of humanity is like the six blind men touching the elephant. Many people are feeling parts of the elephant and describing the part they are touching, but with blindfolds on, it is very hard to describe the whole deception. Are these blind men humans? Yes, of course. They see parts of this enslavement and they know something is happening. Something isn't right. You can have godlike beings walking around the earth coincident with murder, rape, child abuse and war and they don't feel the separation and deception. Something is terribly wrong. Why are we letting this happen? According to the wing makers, 
there are people who are incarnated now who would be the equivalent of outliers.